this is Erin Griggs of Erin Griggs Wordslinger, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit today about some of my favorite books because it is National Drop Everything and Read Day today. Even if you're watching this video and the day has passed, you can still go ahead and drop everything and read, something that I highly recommend as a former teacher and as a current writer and book editor and copy editor. So, without further ado, here's just some of my random picks. I could go on and on. There will be more videos on my favorite books in the future, but here is a plethora of books from some of my favorite genres. There should be something for everybody out there. So, no particular order. Dorothy Parker, her complete works. Dorothy Parker is the original queen of snark. So if you like spicy brains, really, really bitter, bitterly funny and bitter, uh, poetry that is easily accessible and readable with some highly quotable lines from a woman who really changed the world of women poets in the early 20s and basically party like a rock star before there were rock stars, then you should check out Dot Parker. So, now, fiction. One of my favorite authors, Sarah Waters. Now, this happens to be Fingersmith, but Sarah Waters has a lot of other novels out there. Most of them are historical novels set in generally Victorian England. Um, a couple of them are set in post-World War I England. And then her latest, The Little Stranger, is set in post-World War I England as well. But my favorite are the, the Victorian English ones. Now, Sarah Waters is, uh, her novels have a very strong lesbian slant to them, which is awesome because how fun is it to get historical facts on what it's like to be a lesbian in pre, um, pre-modern, pre-modern, in the pre-modern world, Victorian England and the England of the 19-teens and the 1920s and 30s. So check her out. They're really awesome. Okay, sci-fi and fantasy, the queen, the grand dame of science fiction. This is Lois McMaster's Bujol, and she has written the Miles Verkosian series, which is science fiction. This happens to be one of her forays into a more fantastic world, um, the Sharing Knife series. She also has the series that has the, the Curse of Chalion, which is in a different world. Uh, she's won tons of awards. She's fantastic, whether it's fantasy or science fiction. Read. Just, just read her. Just read her. Okay. The King. It, it says so right there. The King. The King of Horror. I love Stephen King. Uh, some of his work, not fond of. Sorry, Mr. King, but the Tommy Knockers was terrible. But, Bag of Bones. Bag of Bones. Forget about the miniseries. It was okay if you haven't read the book, but the book is one of the best things that he's written. It's really, really fantastic. It's scary as heck, but even if you're not a horror fan, Bag of Bones is excellently written, and it just is a wonderful examination of not only not only things that are scary, that go bump in the night, but also, you know, humanity, the human condition, how people deal with things like grief and losing a loved one and trying to protect the helpless. So check this one out. Uh, YA. I love me some young adult fiction, and Rochelle Mead's Vampire Academy series is fantastic. This is the first one in the series, which has uh, culminated. It's, I think, a six-book-long series, and she is starting a spin-off series called, I believe, Bloodlines, that is based on this world. So if you like strong, smart, not helpless female protagonists, this is no Twilight, guys, seriously. 
YA vamp novels were around way before Stephanie Meyer. She does it a lot better. Check her out. Okay. If you have younger children, or if you just remember this book, or if you just love intelligent YA, I cannot recommend Susan Cooper's The Darkest Rising series enough. It is smart as heck. I read this when I was a young child, and it is well written, it's engaging, and I specialize in medieval literature, and because of authors like Susan Cooper and uh, Lloyd Alexander, I had a really strong basing in Arthurian mythology and Welsh mythology, and even if you don't particularly want to have that skill set, that's really good. Don't pay attention to the movie. I say that a lot. Don't pay attention to the movie. Read, read the book, okay? All right, uh, general fiction. As a teacher, I taught Bastard Out of Carolina by Dorothy Allison several times, and it spurs some of the best conversations with my students, high school students that I have had uh, with any other book except perhaps barring Lori Hall's Anderson's YA novel, Speak. This is not a YA novel. This is a hard book to read. It's a, good, it's, it's a trigger for anyone who has abuse issues, but the writing is spare, the writing is gorgeous, the writing is powerful, it's honest, it's brutal, it's blunt, it's fantastic. But it's hard. I mean, not hard to read. The language is easy, but it's very realistic. But I can't recommend it highly enough. Truly one of my favorite novels. All right, winding down, nonfiction that connects with fiction. This is Reading Lolita in Tehran. It's a memoir in books by Azar Nafisi, and it is fantastic. I read this and immediately had to go back and reread some of the novels that she refers to in her memoir. This is a woman who lived in Iran and she, under that regime, she was a literature teacher at universities and under the increasingly um, misogynistic and restrictive regime started to teach a private class for women students based on works of literature. And I, I had to go back and reread Lolita. I had to go back and reread Henry James, uh, go back and reread Nabokov. Oh, I said that already. Uh, just after reading this. Now, it's dense. It's dense. It's not a ooh, quick pleasure read, but it is a really fantastic glimpse of life in, uh, life in Iran in the 80s. Uh, the life of a woman in Iran, of an academic in Iran, and also the stories of the, the young women in her private class and how the exploration of literature really helped them to examine their lives in this society. It's really fantastic. And last but not least, um, I mentioned Dorothy Parker earlier, and Edna St. Vincent Millay is a lyrical poet who lived also in the same time period of Dorothy Parker in the 19-teens, 1920s. This is uh, Nancy Mulford's fantastic biography of Edna St. Vincent Millay, another woman who partied like a rock star before there were rock stars, uh, set the bar high women poet. She was the first woman poet to win the Pulitzer, and it just, it reads like a novel. It's so good. You can see by the sign, I've reread it tons of times. I mean, she was bisexual, she uh, had wild flings, she smoked cigarettes and drank when women weren't supposed to do those things. She cursed, she, you know, had addictions to morphine. I mean, of course, you know, poetry is made out of tragedy a lot of times. You know, look at Dot Parker, look at Dylan Thomas, look at a ton of poets. But uh, Millay's life reads like a novel and is truly fabulous. All right. Thank you for sticking with me and uh, listening to me go on about some of my favorite books. The last to, uh, the last three that I'd like to mention just really quick are um, urban fantasy because that's one of my favorite genres. 
Marjorie M. Liu, who writes a fantastic uh, urban and paranormal fantasies as well as comic books. Her latest is The Mortal Bone, and that is the last in a series. It's really fantastic. You should read it. Uh, Stacia Kane. Her latest just came out, I think, a week or two ago. It's called Sacrificial Magic, and it's fabulous because she's got a really strong protagonist who is very kick-ass, but she's also an addict, and there's just, like, a lot of elements in the world that she creates. It's a post-apocalyptic world that's just really, really interesting, and it's very new. I read a lot of urban fantasy, and she just has a really unique take on the world that she creates and her heroine, and it's really awesome. Last but not least, Faith Hunter. How did I not hear of Faith Hunter before the last couple of months? She has uh, written two series that are fantasy or urban urban fantasy. The Jane Yellow Rock series is awesome. It's about a uh, shapeshifter, not a werewolf, not a lichen, uh, but a shapeshifting skinwalker, which is, if you're familiar with Patricia Briggs' novels, skinwalkers are, um, are part of Native American mythologies in several parts of the country in the United States. And it's a really fantastic series. And then she has the Rogue Mage series, which deals with the ideas of angels. And I'm not really particularly fond of angels, um, but she makes this really intricate, magical, like kind of post-apocalyptic American society in which there is basically this, you know, takeover, this, uh, this, rapture that happens, and we find out that angels are real, but they're not kind of what we expected. All right, so thank you for listening to me, and I hope that you will join me later when I do more recaps or more in-depth reviews on books and authors that I enjoy to read. So drop everything and read. Please visit me at www.erinegrids.com if you are interested in more reviews or if you are interested in my writing or copy editing services. And I can also be found on Twitter at, at Wordsly News. Hope to see you there. I welcome comments.